coach always used to tell me, you always gotta, you always gotta record your practices. You always, so that way you can show me and I can make fun of you. Yep, record your practice and um, record your record your taxes because <laughs> you don't want to get audited. And our sponsor this week is TurboTax. Not true. <laughs> I, not true. Tur- it's so, actually H and R Block. That's I, not true either. <laughs> Neither one. I don't do my taxes. No, no. My wife does my taxes. Yeah, I don't. I please don't come for me. I, I know. Honest. I owe so much money. I don't. Never pay paid them. a tax in my life. Um, I actually really like TurboTax's new. Wait, slogan. don't, 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 because they're they're gonna have to pay us for for this kind of. Literally, their new slogan is free, 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 free. Oh, that's true. I've seen that. I like, love it. The kid in the spelling bee has to spell the word free. And I'm like, bro, how did you make it to the last man standing at the spelling bee? And your last word is four letters long, two of which are the same letter. And yeah. you can't spell it. R. <laughs> the double letter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Um, um, uh, uh, do you want to uh, do it? Uh, no, do you want to intro? No, you do it. You go. It's, okay. your, it's your episode. Okay. Hello, welcome to the Zeitgeist Podcast. My name is Nick. I almost said Greg again. I don't know why you do that. Uh, and my name is Greg. Oh, thank God. Yeah, that was close. Ooh, that was, I, I, had to, I had to think for a second. Yeah. I keep Ooh. thinking it's like... Is this, is, this a freaky, is this a Freaky Friday kind of scenario? We both like switch bodies and we don't realize it yet. And so like, like I'm actually Nick and you're actually Greg, but we're trying to play it cool. The thing, yes, because if we did switch bodies... You know what would actually make sense if, because whenever people in movies switch bodies, they like switch the voices. Yeah, I guess to better illustrate that they're the other person, that it, wouldn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't make. You any would sense. still have that person's voice. Well, it's not I like, don't think that happens. Take the vocal cords with you, right? <laughs> Just like, rah, rah, like rip them out and put them in the other person. But I don't think I think Freaky Friday. Yeah, that didn't happen. Freaky Friday. Yeah, it was like it was the most realistic of body switching movies. Yeah, I think they they remade it too for oh, Disney did they? Channel. That that must be bad. That yeah. must be awful if oh, they made on. it as a Disney Channel movie. I've never seen the original, but I loved the Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis one. That was a good movie. Was that not the? That wasn't the original. No, that was the remake. Oh, that was the remake. Yeah, the other one's like a like a nineties eighties movie, I think. The Freaky Friday was what year was Freak? Siri, <sighs> Siri. <sighs> Shh, there's a baby. Sorry. You're right. There's a baby. I'm sorry. It's you. You're but, the baby. Friendly reminder that um. Nick is a father, and I'm soon to be a father. And we're struggling a bit mm-hmm. uh, to raise our family and put food in our children's mouths. So if you'd want to, there's a tip jar. Uh, you can you can throw a couple pennies our way. Yeah. The, the link to that is in the show notes, and it's also on our pinned tweet. Um, Greg is currently looking up the release date of the original Freaky Friday. Oh, uh, you're right. You're mm-hmm. right. The original starring Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. And Barbara Harris. I don't know who that is. Um... Yeah, I don't know who Barbara Harris is, but I know I know who Jodie Foster is. Um, also, also starring. Um, hold on, let me see if they're related real quick. Who? John Aston, related to Sean Aston. Sounds right. Yes. Oh, but it's not his biological child. It's the ex-wife Patty Duke's huh. son and her ex-husband Michael Tell. Like, did you know Emma Roberts? Is Julia Roberts' um, niece? I did know that. I did. It's, it's niece or something. They're related, though. Anyway, the first Freaky Friday was 1976, and the ah. second one was 2003. 2003, man. Height of Lindsay Lohan's career. Uh, true. That is true. Anyway. Anyway, moving on. It has been five minutes that we haven't discussed the topic. Not at all. Well, I mean, that's a few episodes ago when it was my turn. We went like 20 minutes without <laughs> discussing the topic. So this is we've true. got some time. Okay. So, Greg, here we go. This is a fun one, guys. It's completely ridiculous, and I absolutely love it. Beautiful. My favorite ones. So, you know the band The Beatles? Is this Paul McCartney? No, but okay. I knew you would jump to that. Uh, okay. There's a lot of conspiracies. You plan this whole thing out. Yeah, I planned the whole thing out because there's a lot of conspiracies about The Beatles, and they're all known. We don't need to cover those. This one, Greg, what if I told you that The Beatles never actually broke up, and they st- Still are making music. I tell you, show me where George Harrison and John Lennon are, 
Because those brothers is dead. Well, not according to the Beatles never broke up dot com. You're telling me John Lennon was never murdered and George Harrison did not die of cancer. Yep. Go on. I love it. Okay. So there's a website called the Beatles never broke up dot com. You need to go there because there is physical evidence of a tape, an unreleased tape of Beatles songs written. Okay, now the link's not working. God dang it. The FBI shut him down. The FBI is like, we can't have this. There is a Beatles tape with a full album that was released on September 9th, 2009. Uh, when was it written? Do, you, do we know? Well, I just got that information completely wrong. But you know what? There's a whole explanation. I'm going to read it to you. Okay, because I'm going to say... I was going to ask, all right, what about Yoko Ono, first of all, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I'm still curious about Paul McCartney. I don't know if it's the real Paul McCartney or not, okay. but we'll, we'll get into that. So this on here, you click the story, and it explains exactly what this is about. Okay. What, why the Beatles never broke up. Okay. So I'm just going to read it, mm-hmm. commentate when you feel free. Sure. That's, that's what I do. The following is account is an actual account of my experiences as recent... My experiences as of recently, because of the nature of what has happened, I must remain anonymous until I feel it is safe to reveal my real name. For now, I will refer to myself as James Richards. On September 9th, 2009, which is when this guy experienced this, not when the album was released, I Ah, apologize. Okay. I experienced something that I'm still having trouble with believing that actually happened to me. I came in possession of a cassette tape containing a Beatles album that was never released. In fact, not only was it never released but it was recorded many years after they broke up. And I'm not talking about Kalta, K-L-A-A-T-U. What is that? Wait, wait, K-L-A-A-T-U. Kalta? Kalatu? I don't know, actually. Kalatu? I don't know enough about Beatles history. Okay, I think that's one of the songs. I'm I'm sorry, I don't know a lot about Beatles either. Yeah. Anyway, now this is where the story becomes slightly more unbelievable And it is almost embarrassing to attempt to explain the incident for to you for fear of viewing me as a completely in fear of viewing me as completely absurd. I must assure you, I am not insane. I'm not on drugs. And hopefully the audio from this tape will be enough proof that there is more than what we think out there. I live in Livermore, California, but on September 9th, I was driving home from Turlock after visiting a friend for a few days. I had my dog with me and I didn't have any plans for the day, so I decided to take a drive through a place called Del Puerto Canyon, just west of Turok. There's a scenic route. It's fun to drive through. Um, I go through there, blah, blah, blah. I took a cruise through there while I thought I took a cruise through the scenic route on my way home and it was about 2 p.m. A ways into the canyon, my dog starts acting like she needed to use the bathroom. So I pulled over to the first available parking area to the side of the road and let her out while I stretched. At first, I didn't notice, but then I heard barking from about 30 yards away. My dog was started to chase a rabbit. Now, my dog is a pretty good dog, but if she's chasing something, there's no stopping her. And the only thing I can do is become part of the chase. So mm. he went after his dog. My dog, too. Mm-hmm. They already had about 40 yards head start, so I really had to book it. They were on uneven ground. It was difficult to run, and it wasn't very far into the chase when I stepped into a rabbit hole and knocked myself unconscious. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but that's kind of a funny scene, right? Like, yeah. you just step in a rabbit hole and, like, pow, and you're knocked out. Mm-hmm. Because, like, because he, well, how does he know it was a rabbit hole? That's a good question. You know what? I call that, I call into question the val- validity of this whole story. Me too. I how mean, do how know? does one knock oneself he out? He just immediately steps in and goes, rabbit hole. I mean, LL Cool J said, Mama he, said, knock you out. Not Mama said, knock me he out. He literally fell down a rabbit hole. Bro. Alice in Wonderland, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro, it's all connected. <laughs> well, when he woke up in a room with some furniture and electronics in it, it I was taken care of and, bandi- and had a bandage on my head, but I still felt very uneasy about the situation because where I fell and hit my head was very rural, an unpopulated area with no houses and the outside window of the room and there and the outside the window of the room I was in, I could hear traffic. OK, th- let me just pause. That doesn't happen. That crap happens in movies, but 
if somebody's just driving down a scenic route in the highway, they don't see somebody laying on the ground and think like, oh, poor soul, I'm going to take them home and take care of them. Happens in movies, the great plot point. But no, they drive by and see like, oh, that sucks. Ha <laughs> ha. Snap a picture and keep on driving. Okay, but this guy's like in a room. In the four, like in I know, room. I know, but I'm just saying in real life, if you trip in a rabbit hole and get knocked out, you stay there until you wake back up. Well, Greg, let me tell you that the guy that helped him isn't a normal guy. It's John Lennon. I don't know. Maybe it's Paul McCartney. Maybe it's oh. someone else. <laughs> name, name one other Beatle. Ringo Starr. All right, name the fourth one. George... I forgot his last name. Harrison. George yeah, Harrison. Yeah, yeah. You were close, though. Closer than a lot of people. Nobody knows George Harrison. He's a great, great songwriter. Yes, he is. Here Comes the Sun. That's a George do, Harrison do, do. song. It's beautiful. Anyway, go I ahead. I love the doo-doo-doo. Okay. So, he could hear traffic. I wasn't near the window in the room. I was actually on the other side next to an unusual-looking electronic machine that I didn't recognize from anywhere or that I've ever seen before. The only reason that it stood out was because it seemed out of place in a person's home, which most of the room resembled. I decided to get up and look out the window, but the door opened and in ran my dog, who was pretty excited to see me. When I looked up, there was a man standing at the door. He was about six feet tall, had a medium, had medium long black hair, and was dressed casually, but gave me a greasy vibe. Mm. If you know what I mean, he introduced himself as Jonas and, I, and asked me if I was okay. Wait, wait. Was it Joe Jonas? <laughs> he... Did Joe Jonas... He came from the year 3000. Did Joe Jonas take this guy into the future? I mean, there's not much to say, but they lived underwater. Not much. And and my great-great-great-granddaughter's doing fine, which is good. I'm really worried about her. Yeah. I think I mean, her name is Serena. Yeah, or Argatha. <laughs> or or it's, it's Martha from Agartha. You know, but at that point, they just have numbers. Her name is like, how is 723 doing mm-hmm. 0.9? Yeah, right. Carry the one. It's like the code name Kids Next Door where they all have numbers. Yeah, exactly that. Number thinking, two. How how big can that group be? And how come like how come that one British kid who's not any older than any of the other kids gets number one? Did all these numbers get assigned at the same time? I never thought about that. I'm like I'm like if if this gen if this has been around for generations, right? Then like maybe his father was number one at one point or something. Have like, you never seen the that? movie? Uh, uh, probably his father not. was number zero. Then how did he get number one? There must picked- have been other kids next door. If he was zero, somebody else would have been one. Well, whenever the kid turns into a teenager, the number's decommissioned and they can repick it. Still, it's just, it's just, at, at that point, there must have been enough people in between the ages of this guy you can also and have- his son that would have taken up the number one at some point. Yeah, because number one was the number zero right, son. I'm, sa- I'm saying there could have been even, there could have been like one person who was born like a day before the, the new number one who took number one, you know? I don't know. Maybe it was just available at the time when he picked his number. I mean, he, he got really lucky. Yes, he did. Because and also, not only that, but all of them in the same tree house, one, two, three, four, and five, they got like, how did that happen? They probably assigned that. Because of their tree house? Because of their numbers. What? No, they, they were assigned the numbers. They didn't have the numbers intrinsically. Okay, we are discussing the lore of Kids Next Door. There, there are questions that need to be answered. They lived in a giant treehouse. No, they played in they a giant treehouse. They could tree go house. to the moon, Greg. They were children. That's true. They had an actual moon base. These children were more advanced than modern day adults. Like they're, In 2020, we do not have a moon base we can travel to. No, they can do it literally in like 10 minutes. They can do it whenever they want to. Yeah, because... Unless the whole thing's imaginary, which makes sense because they're kids and they're that's playing. That's another theory people have come up with. I think the that's, whole thing I think was that's just probably playing. true. It's probably true. But like they went like across the globe. Like there were other countries with other kids with numbers. And some kid, some kid was like you know three hundred and seventy two or yeah. something. One kid and he's was like, like pie. Yeah, I know. And, and like and like if I'm that kid, I'm just like man, I don't even want to play. You know, like you're giving me this this like I'm like way back in the back of the line from like the original numbers. You know. Yeah. But you could do like 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.2, 1. But 3. they didn't. They, and a you know that. had like fractions in their numbers. Don't pretend you don't know that. Like there was, I remember in the show that there was a, a set of twins and one was like 33 and a third and the other one was like 33 and a third or something. Well, they can't have the same number. I don't remember. It was something know. like that. I don't know. I don't or one was like one half and the other was like, one was like, <sighs> this is, this is dumb. 
Yeah, okay. let's move on. Sorry. I'm sorry. This is a very interesting story, and I need to keep reading it. Yep. Not to. I, I do love Kids Next Door, though. It's a great show. Okay, so he introduced, introduced himself as Joe Jonas. Um, <laughs> if you ask me to ask you if I was okay, which I said yes, he then found he found me unconscious in a field with my dog barking at me. So I thanked him for helping me and my dog out. And then I was surprised. My dog even came back to me. And then I asked him a question that would make me start wondering, in fact, if I had gone crazy. I asked him, where am I? About 20 feet away from where I, f- I found you, he replied. I told him that that couldn't be possible because there was no house in at least 20 miles from where I last remember being. He then told me what he was going to say. He he then told me that what he was going to say next will seem very shocking and unbelievable that if he didn't actually, that if he didn't actually experience it himself, then he wouldn't believe it. He took a look at the machine near the window and looked back at me and said he transported me into parallel earth all right i'm i'm game you're game i'm game it's so so similar to the 2012 theory this is this is a parallel universe yeah so he transported um joe jonas transported um james richards into the par into a parallel earth let me also just real quick DC Comics. There's multiple Earths as part of like the the comics, like yeah. especially in like the Flash. Right. Who decided that that was Earth One? Because everybody, I think, would pick Earth. They would all think they're Earth One. Right. You know, because they all they all they're the only Earth they've ever known. So who is like you know like oh I guess we're Earth Two. Why are they cool with that? They're like no, I want to be Earth One. Well, you know what I mean? Like who who was like all right you're Earth One Two Three Four Five Six Seventy Five Eight Hundred and Twenty. 1,000. Like, it's like, no, everybody thinks that they're Earth 1. They don't even know there's even other Earths out there. Why are they all just cool with it? Like, the people that go to other Earths... another kids next door argument right here. Exactly. Like, when they when people go to other Earths, they're just like, oh yeah, I was at Earth 82. And it's like, how do you know that? Who did, who decided that was Earth 82? The people on Earth 82 well, certainly did Maybe they didn't. have, like, classifications. Like, is this Earth, like, have more water? Does this Earth have, like, more land? Like, maybe there's, like, a classification, like, Earth uh, GR, like... But it, blah, no, blah, but it blah, blah. wasn't. It's Earth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means that somebody must just exist outside of the universe entirely, and they're just dictating, like, all right, like, they've got, like, a book, and they, like, Earth 1, 2, 3, 4, and they got tabs on them. Well, that's impossible because there's infinite Earths. That's what I'm saying. Who, who gave them all these numbers? Everybody would be like, I'm Earth 1, because that's all they've ever known. They don't even know there's other Earths out there. Maybe and when they find out, suddenly they're like, oh, I guess I'll be Earth 70. You know, like, I'll take that one if nobody's taking it. Yeah, it's like picking a basketball jersey. They discovered jersey. you, like, 10 millionth in lines. Like, you're Earth 10 million and one. It's like, yay. You're like, <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's like, what do you have? Oh, um, on our Earth, that tree, it ain't there. <laughs> right. Ah. Yeah. Anything else different? No. No, that's it. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> on, on our Earth, that pebble that you tripped on in sixth grade and skinned your knee? wasn't there you never skinned your knee in sixth grade you're welcome Mm -hmm. you can live your life without that skinned knee i know Mm -hmm. yeah like check check it out look at look at look at his knee this is your doppelganger on this earth look at his knee look at his knee it's beautiful pristine he's a knee model now your knee fucked up (laughs) yeah your your knee looks awful bro this guy makes his living with his beautiful knees that could have been you yeah yeah sucks you have knees of a whore (laughs) (laughs) I'm so Oh man. Okay. So aggressive. Okay. All right, let's move on. I didn't know this was the jerk earth. <laughs> right. The jerk. The jerk. <laughs> Just call you stupid earth. Call your earth stupid. <laughs> it just cries in his machine. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going back to Earth 10. I'm going back to Earth 69 where people are nice. <laughs> I uh, anyway, let's let's get Earth going. 420. Oh, man. It's out there, probably. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he traveled to parallel Earth. He said he traveled to our Earth dimension and found me knocked out in the blazing heat with nobody around, and so he helped me out. Normally, he said he doesn't take outsiders through a portal, but in my case, he thought I might need urgent help. I immediately started asking questions about traveling to parallel worlds. Since I, since all I knew about the topic was YouTube videos of Micho Kaku... Micho Kaku? I don't know. Remember that name. We're going to have to check them out on YouTube. Yeah. He told he told me to slow down and he would explain himself. Apparently in his world, 
a parallel travel machine can be purchased quite easily. While not cheap, it's pretty popular even though the machine can be dangerous enough to cause death. In the 1950s of his dimension, the government was faced with the decision to continue to fund a space program, I'm guessing NASA, or a parallel dimension program called ARPD. I can't remember what he said it stood for, but I'm pretty sure the PD is parallel dimensions. And I remember the acronym because I noticed I noticed it on a lot of electronics in the room I was in. He explained that the real danger of using one of these machines was exploring new dimensions. Since there are infinite amount of Earths and other dimensions, uh, shout out to Earth 69, uh, <laughs> only a small amount have ever been explored. The problem with exploring unknown dimensions is the chance you will die somehow once you walk through the portal doorway. He told me that people will die from falling if the ground isn't close enough to where the portal opens, die from drowning, the worlds that are completely covered in water and had to reopen a portal underwater, die from fire, atmospheric issues. He said other in order for people to avoid this, they would have to know what they would be that there would be a similar ground in the dimension in the dimension they would be traveling to. So his government began a research, began to research worlds that were safe to transport to, even create public spots where people could choose a menu of worlds to go to that were all safe. Many of these worlds were lush, vegetatious worlds that were never ruined by man, only to be invaded by large, overcrowded populations of traveler of travelers, travelers worlds. He said something about the new industry that opened up because of this, one of them being something like dimensional life brokers these people offer the chance to live as someone new in an already established similar world that doesn't know of dimensional travel nor are there people crossing the dimensional border to joe jonas said he was an explorer <laughs> for one of those dimensional traveler agencies and was looking for a new uncharted dimension and came up on my earth our earth we talked about a lot of things and it was very interesting to see the similarities and the differences we had been uh, differences between worlds, food, culture, TV, technology. We covered a lot. We also started talking about music, which was an interesting topic because there were many of these same bands between our worlds that existed, including the Beatles. Uh, when their name got brought up, Jonas mentioned that his brother just got back from seeing them perform at a concert recently, which I gave him a weird look and said, you mean they're still together? And he said, yeah, I told him about how they broke up in our world and John and George passed away. Apparently in his world, they are alive, healthy, and still on tour. Interesting. And he has some uh, evidence of this? Yeah, the tape. Okay, but like, did he digitize this tape? I think he uploaded the song. All right, that, that, I'm interested in that, but let's keep going. Okay. Jonas then had, me follow, then had me follow him into another room that had a bookshelf-looking thing with some cassette tapes. Yes, the music ones. Apparently, CDs never quite caught on in his dimension. Uh, a tape labeled Player Radio Record Player. Though it didn't quite look like the type of radios we have, the speakers looked more like crinkled cardboard, but sounded pretty good. I didn't get a good look at the speakers, but they certainly weren't round. It's almost like a tall accordion-looking thing. The only Beatles album we had uh, that was store-bought had a real cover art of Sgt. Pepper's, which the cover looked slightly different than the one we have, but the songs were all the same. The six Beatles tapes he had were all like somebody recorded them on a blank cassette for him and then wrote the songs on title cards and then slipped them into the case. So, like, they... Burnt, mm -hmm. They like recorded like, themselves. Like burnt, yeah. They, they like made burning a, a CD, but like with a tape. Yeah, they recorded a mixtape, I guess, of just that album. Yeah. A couple of the album's titles were a couple of the album's titles were written on the tape, and I recognized them, but there were about four that I had never heard before. He played a few of the songs from one of them, which was totally surreal to hear Beatles music that that was never made, at least in our world. We talked for a little bit, and he said a girl made the tape for him while he was in upper school. Um what they call high school. She was a huge fan of them and wanted him to listen to them. He popped in the first tape I was, and was putting in the second one when I told him he should record me a copy of one of these so I could take it back with me, thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. Well, the look Jonas gave me when I said this part of the reason I am remaining anonymous, not only did it sort of scare me, but it was also a various, almost creepy look to follow by the phrase, not word for word, I can't remember exactly what he said, no, you are not allowed to take anything with you back to your world. No pictures, no souvenirs, no tapes, no nothing. 
I asked him why, and he wouldn't really say except for that my safety, uh, except for my safety, I wasn't to take anything back. Of course, I'm not the type of person to go through all of the parallel world stuff and not grab something to prove my outrageous story and my experience. For the moment, I told him I wouldn't take anything, and I changed the subject about a ha- I changed the subject. Blech. About half an hour later, some more talking, and I heard the doorbell ring, and he left the room to check the door. I knew that may not I knew that I may not have another chance to take something, so I grabbed one of the tapes, put it in my pocket, and then shuffled the tapes around to make it look less obvious that something was missing. When he came back inside, I said I was kind of hungry to just uh, to just get us out of the room. I mixed the tapes up a little bit so it was hard to tell which one was missing, but I didn't want to be there when he found out. So then he took me to the other room and fed me. For the most part, the food tasted like ours, but it was different product names and colors. Purple ketchup was the strangest. We talked about <laughs> they had purple ketchup at one point. Yeah, purple ketchup was like a promotional bit. Um, yeah, it was like. The fun kid purple ketchup or whatever. And it tasted like ketchup, but like when I was a kid, I used it because I thought it tasted different, but like it was just ketchup with purple food coloring. Well, they like color makes you think it tastes different though. It does. Like if you close your eyes, it probably would have. Fruit Loops all taste the same. This is true. Minesweeper, Fruit Loops all taste the same. Tricks as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, they fooled you with color. Even though they're back in their fruity shapes. Oh, are they back in the fruity shapes now? Mm -hmm. They put them back. Oh. Yeah, they all taste the same. Yeah. M and M's all taste the same. Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks all well, taste the same. Are they different colors? Yeah, green and, and red. Brown, brown, red, brown, red, ish, orange, greenish, mauve, uh, auburn. No, actually, I, this was this was kind of crazy. Total sidebar here. Um, there was a girl I worked with who was convinced that uh, brown. I think it was brown M and M's. There was a certain color of M and M's tasted different. And I was like, no, I don't believe you. So I blindfolded her. I tested the blindfold myself, made sure it was a good blindfold, right? And I was like, I'm going to give you some different M&Ms at different times. And you got to tell me if it's like, if it's brown or if it's not, right? Just whatever color it is, right? So I showed her a bag of M&Ms, all different colors, okay? And then I swapped it with a bag of all brown M&Ms. And I gave her one. And I was like, okay, what color is she? She's like, oh, gross, it's brown. And I'm like, okay, what about this one? Oh, gross, it's brown. What about this one? Are these all brown? And I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> like, they're M&M's. Oh, my God. They're chocolate. Somehow, she had this weird ability. You might call it a gift. I don't know. She doesn't like certain M&M's. But like, she she definitely knew that something was up. It was I'm weird. I'm never going to look at brown, <clears throat> brown M&M's Bro. the same again. I'm going to look at it and yeah. go, you yeah. imposter. Right. You're just anyway. a naked M&M. Just a naked M&M. Anyway, carry on. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He, um, purple ketchup was weird. Uh, uh, the time of day was the same. We went back to the room with the machines in it. I grabbed my dog and shook Jonas's hand before taking, for taking care of me when I was knocked out. I thanked him again, stepped through the portal, which felt like getting wet, but staying dry the entire time. Really weird. Um, when I put my dog on the ground and he, she even shook herself off like she thought she was wet. Back in our world, I could see my car was still on the road. And there was straight line and and there was a straight line burn mark on the ground from where the portal had shown up. It was dark outside, and the only reason I noticed the burn was because it was still smoking from the heat. I walked back to my car, I didn't run this time, and I drove home. The worst part was I couldn't even listen to the tape on the way home because I didn't have a tape player in my car. Mm. I actually wasn't even able to listen to it at home because for the same reason, I didn't own a tape player. I had to go to Walmart and buy a tape player just to listen to it. Fortunately, I don't have any information about the tape other than what is written on the card sleeve. The track names are easily are, were written as well as the album title, Everyday Chemistry. Everything else about it is as mysterious as, you, as it is to me. It also wasn't like I couldn't have asked the guy anything about it, especially after talk, taking it from him. I'll post some more about my experiences in the coming days, but I have to go to work right now, and this post is extremely long enough. If anyone has any questions uh, or want to ask me about the incident, then just send me an email to thebeatlesneverbrokeup at yahoo.com. I'll answer every question to the best I can. Lastly, if anyone out there has any experience in anything like this, please contact me. Uh, some other things this guy said to me almost made me wonder if there isn't if this isn't the first time dimensional travels have been to our dimension. Thank you. So that's his whole story. 
So that gives me an interesting thought, like totally unrelated, but I've always been intrigued ever since I was a kid by cases of spontaneous combustion. Right. Where people just burst into flames for no good reason. I wonder if it's because our atmosphere is just different enough for certain interdimensional travelers that when they come through their portal, they their bodies begin to oxygenate and catch flame and they just burst into flames and die. Or they're aliens. Or they're aliens. And th- that's how we weed them out. Or it's a CIA gun that shoots like a laser that just causes people, people to f- explode. Just catch fire. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, all poss- all viable possibilities. Or all three. It's all three? These are these are interdim- interdimensional aliens that have been shot by the CIA with a because fire laser. Because they don't want us to know about them. And then they wipe our memories to think that they're humans. Men in black. <gasps> we need to do an episode of the men in black. Let's do an episode of the men in black. Okay. But <laughs> I, yes, we do need to do that because it's crazy. Um, so he does provide pictures. He provides pictures of the actual like scorch marks from the oh, portal. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. It's very hard to see. It's like a pile of sticks, but like a black spot. Interesting. And then he's got pictures of the uh, cassette. It says Beatles Everyday Chemistry. And there's a couple more if you just scroll around. And All then right. they have like the tape out of the box. And then on the side, he has every song posted. And you can e- actually download the entire uh, album. But if we do that, are we going to be like breaking interdimensional law? And like, well, I mean, these aren't real Beatles songs. I mean, I mean, I, would, I don't know. Are I don't they? know enough about the Beatles to know like which ones stand out, but I know that this is something that people did talk about because basically, it sounds like le- apparently they sound like legit Beatles songs, and everyone's like, "Where is this? Like some kind of weird like marketing thing?" But nothing else happened. Or other like than a this. really good cover band, I guess. But like the thing is, like I don't know if you can still email the guy. I thought about it, but I didn't. I don't know how active this is because I don't know when this was written. I guess it's yeah. back in like two thousand nine or two thousand ten. But that he posts all of all of it. Well, we need to listen to some of these songs. I don't know if we can do it like on the podcast where you guys can hear it, but we're gonna link to the to the page so you can listen to the songs as well and yeah. kind of give your take. Because I can read off the. Oh yeah playing the heck is going on i'm a little scared i don't know what that was i just what did you click i clicked the first song called four guys try the second song it's called talking to myself And the next one after that is called Anybody Else, then Sick to Death, then Jen, like a name. And then song six, I'm Just Sitting Here. All right, that sounds like a Beatles song. The first one might have been like an intro. Maybe. But it was four minutes. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I mean, that sounds like the Beatles. It sounds well. It sounds like Paul McCartney. Maybe they're on. Maybe there's a failed album of Paul McCartney that he recorded at one point, and then just like, I yeah, don't know. because so okay. So the song after Jen is "I'm Just Sitting Here." Number seven, Soldier Boy. Number eight, Soldier Boy. <laughs> I just I start playing it. Yo, yeah. And then Soldier Boy, tell uh, over the ocean. Days Like These, Saturday Night, and then Mr. Gator's Swamp Jamboree. That one sounds fun. I'm going to play that one real quick. If it'll load, you know. That'd be really nice if you did. I feel like it, we might pick up some of this in the audio because I can yeah, hear it in the headphones. Might. I'll try and overlap it if I can. Hey, man, <laughs> we need to go to Earth 420 and listen right. to this. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's weird, right? It's weird. It's definitely weird. I want to listen to the songs like on my own time, I guess, and just like see how close they are to actual Beatles songs. 
Um, so I don't know. I think I like you said. There's some songs that are Beatles songs, but there's four that aren't, and I don't know what four they are. Wait, what do you mean? Like he said, the album that he took. I, okay, I don't know if maybe it is the whole album. No, he said he recognized um, all the albums, but there were four albums he didn't recognize. Oh, I see. And th- well, this had to be one because this is like I've never heard of that. I don't think many people have heard of that Beatles album. Yeah, Everyday Chemistry. Yeah. I think if you even search that, it probably takes you to this website, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we, we don't have time to yeah, search go look it up. anymore, but go look it up. We'll link to the page um, and let us know what you think. If you're like a Beatles historian and you've seen them in concert and you've shaken their hands and done drugs with them. If you shot uh, them. If you shot one of them. Uh, then let us know how like close that is to the real deal. And, and if, if, it is, if it's really close or like it seems authentic... I've got questions, and uh, I'm sure you do or too. Or email the dude. I should email him, and then let's email the dude. Follow up. Let's see if he'll come episode. on the show. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, maybe he we'll could get... be anonymous, but you know, have him have him on the show anyway. Yeah, and tell us about Joe Jonas. Yeah, Joe Jonas. Yeah, I I really am curious. I might email him and see if he responds. Yeah, yeah, do it. I'm not because I mean it's from like 2009, maybe 10. Yeah, he. I mean, he, he may not. he may be dead by now if they if they got to him the. Interdimensional cops. A, true. Yeah. Because like, maybe Joe Jonas came back and was like, "You take my, you take my tape." Yeah. That's my only copy. That's, my, that's the only copy in existence in your world. In, in your mine, world, I pick it up at the thrift store all yeah. the time. Yeah. Nobody give even it back cares. because we play stupid. frisbee with these things, man. Yeah. Because yeah. it's because it's just stupid. And then he kills him and he takes the tape back. Yeah. Like, and then he just like comes back with like a doppelganger. He's like, "You live here now." It did say he. It did say he worked for one of those like interdimensional agencies. So maybe he's like a maybe he's a hitman for him. See, the thing I don't understand about that theory is like he stole the tape after someone rang his doorbell. Like who? Oh, well, I like, guess the guy what? who was unconscious. What came to that world? Right. Yeah. So, so it was probably like a neighborhood in that world. I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because he said he could hear traffic. Yeah, which I guess. Yeah, I guess you've got a point there. So yeah, maybe it, I mean, uh, giving that any kind of credibility at all, that's probably what happened. I mean, I'm just trying to think. Like, do you think it's maybe just like unreleased? Like, I think so. Stuff? Either I think it's either like a cover band that sounds remarkably like the Beatles, um, kind of like there's the guy, uh, um, Mark Martell. Like when he sings, sounds remarkably like Freddie Mercury, and he's like he's like a young guy like making music right now. What about so, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? Nah, that's one of a kind, bro. Uh, right. But but like yeah, like there are people that sound a lot like other people, like like singers or or musicians. So either it's someone who just sounds a lot like the Beatles, and he hears it and is like, "Wow, that sounds like the Beatles." Hey, I'm gonna use this and make a fun story on the internet, which people do. Um, or it's unreleased. Beatles songs, which is less likely, but still possible. I don't think he went to another dimension and took a tape, but you know, it's kind of fun just to just to talk about these things because it's like you know, because I mean, there's no because I mean, there's nothing else like there's nothing came of this. It's not like a, an album released later it wasn't some <laughs> weird marketing ploy. It's right. just this weird thing that exists. Yeah, whoever wrote these songs, if they're not the Beatles, just intended to let them let them die anonymously because that otherwise it would take all the magic out of it. Yeah, you know. Well, that has been the Beatles if they never broke up from another dimension. Thank you, Joe Jonas. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Joe Jonas, from the year 3000. We appreciate you. This is Nick Cannon signing off. <laughs> signing off, right? Uh, but before we do that, check us out on Twitter, at Zyguys Podcast. Um, if you enjoyed this, if you heard something new, I heard something new. I always hear something new when Nick does it, and I like to think he hears something new when I do it. This is and true. I like to think that you guys benefit from both of our stories. So uh, if you learn something new, Think about subscribing. We've got new stuff every week. Well, we try to. We missed a couple weeks, but, you know, that's life. So pretty much every week um, you'll hear something new, something fascinating, and you can find something either to believe in or be skeptical of. It's all good here. Yes, sir. It's all good. At Earth, what Earth should we be? Like Earth? I mean, I'm going to fight for Earth 1 if there are other Earths out there because I'd be like, I mean, everybody wants to be Earth 1, so I'm going to shoot for it. I'll take zero. Earth zero is cool too. So we're Earth zero. Yeah. The beginning. The beginning. The first. Earth alpha. Dude. Oh, actually, that's that's a interesting thing. I think I don't remember what uh, I don't remember what episode it was. It wasn't Bob Ross. 
I thought it was Bob Ross for a second. It wasn't. It was one of the episodes we did. I talk about like generations and like how like we relate to each other. Generation X, Millennials, Generation Z, oh, and I like forgot which one that all is. that stuff. I don't remember what episode that is. And I said in that episode, whatever we're calling this current generation, the generation that succeeds Generation Z that comes after like I think anyone born after like 2015, I think. Um, they're calling them Generation Alpha. Oh, really? Yeah. So your daughter, my daughter, all the little babies out there right now, you guys are Generation Alpha. Honestly, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's a pretty cool name. Way cooler than Millennial or Gen Y. I mean, I like Millennial because there's no Gen in it. Well, there it's technically we're Generation Y, but also the Millennials like was the nickname that took over because we came of age in the new millennium. You know, this is true. Yeah, as opposed to like Generation Z was born entirely in the new millennium. Um, and Generation X was born entirely. Well, I guess we were all born before the new millennium too. Generation X was just before us. I don't know. I don't know how they picked that one. Ah, whatever. It well, doesn't matter. But yeah, Generation Alpha, look out for them. They're they're, they're coming for they're you. They're coming babies. for your jobs. They're literally babies. These babies are going to take your jobs. They're taking our jobs. Okay, we gotta. Yeah, we gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm gotta done. Cl- clock out. I gotta. I, I got to clock out. Where's my punch card? Where's where's the punch card? Oh, wait. You're going to clock out and get fired because the Generation Alpha babies going to take your job. Ugh, not right. again. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>